and also uh, to be on safer side i'm also recording session at my end so that if something happens something goes wrong then at least a backup copy would be with me all right so let me quickly um, go through uh, the like previous topics that we discuss and then i will jump to the very very super important topic ip addressing the most important topic of your networking not only networking even network security or cyber security or cloud security so very important topic i'm going to start today so you will have to be very attentive today and uh, in previous two sessions mainly we talked about networking uh, basics uh, in general like uh, uh, about uh, what you call it uh, protocol lan wan and cloud net so mainly we talked about local area network lan network wide area network or wan network maybe cloud network cloud network a bit of isp network so different network types and then we uh, uh, move to protocol section the most important topic and protocol means like a set of instructions set of rules and uh, there are different uh, types of protocols in networking but mainly first we will focus on uh, this the main protocol like communication protocol tcp ip and uh, it's a protocol stack there are two components tcp and ip so in today topic today class i will be starting with this ip uh, portion of it like ip addressing and uh, uh since it, the topic is really very very important so definitely i will be uh, not too fast in fact not too quick so i will take time in this and uh, someone else has joined so let me give record permission if they also want to record the session all right <clears throat> all right so uh, so so far we have covered lan wan network networking in general what is networking benefits of network use cases lan wan protocols like uh, software or program or set of instructions set of rules and today i'm going to start a completely a new topic a very important topic in networking and uh, as i mentioned like i'll be uh, uh like covering this topic at very slow pace because uh, the topic is very important and guys do do you have any idea about ip address anyone like from the group ip address or what is ip i mean like in general like if you you know anything if you would like to share with me about ip address all right no issue no no yeah, i know ip address and that's going to think no. a little bit okay so okay so very uh, basic idea like uh, i think uh, uh, yahai has like probably about uh, ip address no problem no worries so even like you guys if you don't have any knowledge any idea about ip address or ip addressing no problem no worries i'm going to start from this scratch from the very beginning from the very basic and as i mentioned topic is very important so you all will have to be very attentive especially for today session today topic so in this module we will first understand what is ip address and then addressing i mean like the format uh, then classes of ip addresses there are different classes so first thing first and first thing is like understanding ip address in general so ip address is a numeric identifier assigned to each machine on an ip network 
it designates the specific location of a device on the network. An IP address is a software address, not a hardware address. So before I just jump to the next slide, let me very quickly uh, open the simulation and uh, even I will share the link and uh, probably from next class onwards, uh, you, you can like also, you know, like install this tool on your computer. If uh, uh, the tool is like Cisco packet tracer or simulator basically. So for lab implementation, configuration, understanding like uh, uh, routing, switching, even this IP addressing. So you, you, you can build your lab topology uh, by using this simulator. So it's a simulator free to use, right? And uh, especially designed for like Cisco devices, Cisco networking courses. I will share the link. I will post the link uh, from where you can download this tool. Hardly 60 to 65 MB in size. And just next, 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 and very easily, like less than five minutes, so you can easily install this tool or software on your computer. And in case if you will face any issue, then definitely I will help you out. But it's very straightforward. So probably I will uh, share either the link or maybe the software itself, uh, like this Cisco Packet Tracer, and then easily you can install the software on your laptop or desktop. Uh, the tool name is Cisco Packet Tracer. But today, uh, I'm not going to talk about uh, packet tracer. In fact, I will discuss about this simulator later on. But first, I, I just want to explain IP address. And for that, what I'm going to do quickly, I'm going to uh, uh, build a very simple lab topology. And uh, here, like on the at the bottom, if left corner, left hand side, here, like there are some uh, like devices like endpoint and some you know like uh, some servers even like routers switches wireless devices a lot of networking devices and equipments you can find here it's very easy but what i'm going to do i'm going to take a, a switch here and uh, and just click here and it's a switch and uh, here like you can see uh written like 2960 it's a specific model in fact of a switch device and if you remember so in the uh, uh, like the networking basic in the first class, in fact, I talked about uh, a switch device, a network switch device. And if you remember, then I just explained like, why do we need to have a switch in our net environment? Because if there are like three or uh, more than two computers or host devices and uh, we want to do networking. I mean, like we want to put all the computers on a common network so that they can share resources. So in order to connect them, a centralized network device, right? A switch, yes, is required. So this centralized device is what? A switch. So end devices means laptop, desktop, servers, or other devices, they are need to be connected to this centralized device that is the switch so exactly the same like i am trying to simulate here so what i did i took a switch here and then from left hand side if i click on end devices and then a pc so a pc is here maybe another pc maybe the third one fourth one so now there are four or five devices here all right and what I want to do, I want to like connect them physically. So for that, they all need to be connected to this centralized device, <clears throat> a switch in fact, the centralized device is switch this way. Right. In physical environment, what we do, we use a copper cable, patch card or cable patch card, or even you can use another term that is UTP cable, unshielded twisted pair cable, or ethernet cable, right? So in physical environment, physical network, we uh, connect end devices with the help of a network cable, 
right? And switch is only uh, if uh, like if just I show you the physical view. So this is the view in, in fact of a switch. So there are different ports here, like port number one, port number two, port number three. So if switch has 24 ports, that means we can connect maximum 24 devices, computers or laptops, servers, right? This way, computer one, another machine here, the third one, fourth one. So that's the way how physical connectivity is done. And the cable here is uh, basically copper cable, UTP cable, right? So in this virtualized environment, what we can do, we can go to this option like here, right? So it is a symbol to represent a cable. And after clicking, like once you select this, then we get different options here because in cabling also like there are different types of cable. Uh, I'll discuss that later on because today isn't the our topic is understanding IP addressing, right? And this is the first thing that we need to understand because without understanding IP addressing, we cannot move ahead. We cannot go to the next topic. Because whatever we do in networking, every time we start with like assigning address, that is IP address. So that is why understanding whole concept is very, very important. So now here, like there are different cables. And if really uh, we don't understand like uh, which cable type uh, we need to select from the list, because here like you see like different cable types, right? So the first option, is like about automatic selection, right? Automatic selection means if you don't know like whether uh, I'll have to pick this one, this one, this one, which cable. So, and obviously like uh, uh, up, up to like this point, yes, like I have not explained about different cable types. So I assume you don't have, you, you don't have much idea about cabling, right? So the best option is selecting first one. First option means like what? Means like uh, automatic selection of the cable because we are more interested in IP addressing, right? So let me put it here. So connected, another computer, right? It's a very good simulator of packet tester. So this way, all four computers connected to a centralized device switch this centralized device is Ethernet switch, right? And there are four computers. Physical connectivity done. So we have very much finished doing physical connectivity. Now, what next now? Next is like, since there are four computers, one, two, three, four, and let's say from this computer, I want to send some data to uh, this PC, the last one from first, to last, right? Or maybe I want to share something like, let's say I want to uh, share like, a, or I want to download a file or folder, right? From this computer to my local machine. So, so in order to just like access or share resources over the internet or to send any data, right? There has to be some address there has to be some address assigned to end host devices. There has to be some address or some addressing, right? It's, it's very similar to like uh, something, uh, let's say you want to send uh, a letter to someone. So if it, obviously you, you should be knowing like the to, and then you can write down the from. However, nowadays is very less likely like someone sends, uh, you know, like, uh, 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 in fact, later or something because it's all about email and WhatsApp messages and other messages. But yes, if uh, a decade or maybe a couple of decades uh, back, in fact, yes, it was the only uh, way to communicate with the people writing and uh, uh, receiving letters. So in order to send uh, any message or any uh, a letter or application, obviously, there should be like destination address, like the to and the sender, like the from. 
Same here in networking, if there are four computers and from here I want to send data to maybe this machine. So how I can identify the computer? How do I know like where to send the data because there are three more computers connected to the same switch. So there has to be some form of like, you know, like addressing a scheme similar to your house number or something, right? So the same like we are going to understand today. So today agenda is like first understanding this IP address and why I have created this lab topology because uh, at the same time, I'll be showing you practically also, right? How to assign and how we can ensure that computers are communicating with each other. So, but let me quickly uh, go to presentation file first and then I'll be back to this lab topology. So IP address is a numeric identifier. Identifier because why numeric? Because there's certain range, right? I mean, like the address that we assign is in decimal format. Decimal format. That is that we assign, right? Decimal format means like you can use any number in general, like zero to nine. Right, and that's why like the address that we assign is in numeric something. If you have ever seen, then that is that looks like this: one zero one six eight one dot one, or maybe ten dot one dot one, or ten zero zero two, something like this. Right. So numeric identifier assigned to each machine or end device on an IP network or just network. It designates the specific location of a device on the network. And this address is a software address. And what do I mean by software address, not a hardware address? So if I go back to this lab topology, so software address, software address means address assigned to a software. And what software I'm talking about here, a protocol, and the name of protocol is TCPIP, right? Protocol in the previous session, we uh, discussed about protocols. So TCPIP is what? Is a protocol. And protocol means a software, a program, right? So basically address that we assign to like end devices is basically uh, actually assigned to this TCP IP, the protocol, the software, in fact. So if I assign any address, let us assume 10.1.1.1. So address is assigned to the like software or program, right? And, and the software is in operating system. And what is operating system? Like Windows, Windows 10 or Mac or Linux, different operating system, right? So if you remember, so in uh, uh, probably in the first or second class, I uh, just uh, talked about the, uh, and even I also showed you like uh, uh, this uh, protocol option. I mean, like the TCP, I mean, let me quickly show you one more time here, maybe on my physical uh, device, even my laptop itself. So if I open ncp or CPL, just let me minimize this. So like Windows operating systems, even routers, networking devices, they all understand TCP IP, right? TCP IP is a what? Protocol, a software, a set of instructions. And TCP IP is not vendor specific. TCP IP is not vendor specific. TCP IP is like recognized, identified by all operating system and even TCP IP is pre-installed. So if I show you like my ethernet adapter, Wi-Fi adapter of my laptop, right? Networking connection here and see here like TCP IP is already there. TCP IP is already there and TCP IP is what? A protocol. So do I have to install this protocol? No, 
to do all is by default installed. You don't have to install this. And you can even read about the uh, this protocol. Transmission control protocol, internet protocol. Default wide area network protocol that provides communication across diverse interconnected network. So this is the main communication protocol, right? So protocol or software or program is already in the operating system. So today, mainly we are going to talk about this. Addressing only, right? This is what IP address. And then next parameter, the next attribute is also very important, subnet mask. And then third one is gateway. And then here DNS server. So we need to understand different attributes of TCP IP. But first, I'm starting with the IP address. Then maybe not today, next class maybe about subnet mask, gateway, DNS server, of course. Right. So this portion, TCP IP or IP configuration, this configuration need to be done by the administrator. Even in case if you think that, OK, in my environment, let's say here, there are four computers only, right? So this IP configuration, let's say you understand like the syntax, the way how IPs are assigned, the format, right? Let, let us assume you understand everything. But if there are 500 computers, a very large enterprise network should so uh, do we have to like do the configuration manually, individually on all 500 computers? Of course, that can be done is one of the way. So one way is what doing configuration manually. That is a static configuration after understanding IP addressing a scheme. So once you understand like IP addressing different classes, format, rules, everything you understand, let us assume, right? And now actually you are going to do the configuration. So now you have two options. Option number one, you can you can uh, go with this a static configuration. So a static configuration means manual configuration. So in a small network, home network, yes, we generally prefer this way, like a static. Static configuration. Static means manual. But in large enterprise network, a network wherein like you have thousand computers, two thousand devices. So obviously, static configuration, manual configuration, uh, not feasible, right? So we have another way of like configuration and the way of doing configuration that is. Dynamic. Dynamic means what? Automatic. Auto configuration. So automatic configuration means one of the machine, one of the machine will be configured, right, by the administrator to provide IP configuration automatically to all other devices. So we will pick one machine or server or maybe another network device will do configuration on this particular device manually. Technically, we use the term DSCP server configuration. Means you can understand like one of the device would be configured as a server. And this server would be responsible for providing IP configuration automatically to all connected devices. So this way, even if you have 1,000 computers, right? So configure one machine as a server, DSCP server, or maybe your Wi-Fi router, and the rest 999 devices will obtain configuration automatically from this DSCP server. So it's another way of pushing configuration, doing configuration, dynamic configuration, right? But the point here is either you are doing a static configuration or you are doing dynamic configuration, you will have to understand IP addressing schema, IP addressing structure. That's very important, right? Because that's the way of doing configuration, static or dynamic. But we will have to understand the format, the addressing schema, right? 
So as, as, as you can see here on this page, this is my physical machine, right? Physical computer. You can see on this page, TCP IP page, there are two options. Optin IP address automatically, right? So in, in case in my environment, if I have a DSCP server, a server who could provide entire configuration automatically. So even I, I could have selected this option, right? No need to fill out all these entries. This my laptop will then get all configuration from a server, but that server need to be configured, of course. So there are two ways. What I have done, I have I have just assigned IP address manually. Is what a static configuration, right? Of my Wi-Fi adapter. So in today's topic, we all understand this format. The way how it is assigned, like like one and two, because the question here is the IP address you can see is one and two one six eight one dot seventy one. So can I uh, take any IP address here? I mean, like two sixty dot two ninety dot something? No. There is a rule. We need to understand that there is specific range, the range of like the value value range. In fact, so we cannot take any number, right? There are certain rules that we need to understand what value we can select here. So if, again, if I jump to uh, the simulation, this topology, now here, there are four computers, they all are connected to this centralized device, centralized device is switch, physical networking is done, but still four computers, these two, four computers, still they cannot communicate with each other. Why? Because still they do not have IP address. They do not have any address. It's something like uh, uh, there is no house number. So you, uh, no, no one can reach that place, right? No, no, no uh, even a letter cannot be sent because there has to be some house number, street address, locality or area, apartment, something, city, country, right? So very similar to that here in networking. However, we, we have taken very uh, like example of a LAN network, local area network in the same building, in the same office. There are four computers. They all are physically connected. Now, like we want to like do like complete networking. I mean, like we want to uh, like ensure to be sure that they all communicate with each other. So they all need to have IP address, uh, address, right? Either we can assign like IPs statically, manually on all four computers, or maybe we can set up a server to automate the whole process, right? So uh, obviously like we are not going to set up any server at least uh, uh, today. Uh, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will show you later on like how to set up a server or any device like to provide uh, configuration automatically. So if I just double click this computer, this is a simulator, right? So already it's a power on, like here, here is a, a, a button in fact. So it's, it's showing like green. It means the device is, the machine is running. If you want to turn off, then just click here. And now this machine is shut down. You can see here, like the color is changed red now. Right, power on, then click here, it's green. So you might not be able to see properly here, but it's, it's turning like green and red, in fact, with this tab, with this button. Now, if I go to, uh, since it's a virtual uh, like computer, it's a virtual machine, not a real one. So obviously like uh, there's different way to configure IP here. Because in uh, on physical device, what we do, we open the network connection properties. But in virtualized environment, uh, you can go to this config tab here, right? Config, and then fast Ethernet. Fast Ethernet is what? So remember, like in first or second session, I talked about network interface card, LAN card, Ethernet card, like the of. Uh, it's, it's similar to your Wi-Fi adapter, right? So in laptops, you find two adapters, one Wi-Fi adapter, wireless adapter, another Ethernet adapter, right? Minimum two adapters, 
right so again if i open my uh, like laptop page and you can type uh, ncpa.cpl if you want to quickly open network page directly you can use this shortcut command right and where do you need to type the command so just click here start and then run and then run this ncpa.cpl cpl stand for control panel so this space will open up so even even if you will try this command on your laptop you will find uh, one wi-fi adapter right name uh, will be different uh, this name will be different obviously and probably you will get another adapter also forget about these right on my laptop there are some uh, uh, extra adapters forget about these so bare minimum you will find these two adapters one like fire uh, to connect with the wi-fi network another wired networking wired physical cable very like we use physical cable to connect so either wired or wireless right if you open the property page just right click property so you will get the same option you will find the same option here tcp ip this way and then properties and then you will see like this page in fact right so but on this virtualized environment we 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 find different page here and uh, was mentioned here fast ethernet zero and then here you see a, a address here mac address uh, i'm going to talk about this address also later on really very very important this address is hardware address a mac address media access control address but uh, let me quickly go to this page only so this page is a bit different in fact because it's a simulator not a real computer that is why and see here like dscp means automatic and manual so now let's say manually i want to assign ip address to this computer and now just to show you i'm just typing here some you know like invalid value right the value that is not supported intensely i'm going to do that so let's say i am typing this value see here is the error message this is an invalid address right even if i the same page if i open here this is my physical machine right not a virtual one physical and again here if i try to type address ip address here let's say if i type 240 or 245 and see here is something giving message 245 is not a valid entry please specify a value between and see here 1 and 223 in the very first argument, right? What we see an error message. What is error message? Specify any value in this object between one to one to two twenty three, right? And uh, I'll come to this point. Why one to two twenty three? And and other three objects. These three objects any value between 0 to 255 right so first octet like predefined value any number from 1 to 2 2 2 3 and other three octets there are four octets right and what is octet octet means like in binary this is what one octet basically the number that that you are seeing here are in what in decimal decimal numbers right but you understand like in computer everything happens in zeros and ones only two digits zero and one right known as binary numbers binary numbers so we assign decimal value as an ip address but behind the scene computers right understand zeros and ones only these two binary numbers only computers or cpu understand only zeros and ones not the decimal values we as an administrator as a human being we use decimal number here to define but in binary everything is in 
zero and bonds. So basically, this for circuit that we see here, total here, you will find eight bits comprising with zeros and ones. Maybe like this, one, one, zero, 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 something, or maybe one, 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 a, a, any, any, like total eight bits, eight. Means one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight bits, right? And eight bits, also known as one byte. Byte, right? One byte is equal to eight bits. And the same byte is also known as octet. So why we use the term like uh, uh, first octet, second octet, third octet, and fourth octet? It means in IP address total there are total there are four octets because one octet means one byte or eight bits in binary, right? And another important point I must mention here, probably you all might be knowing, whenever we, uh, because it's a bit confusing, sometimes we use bits, sometimes we use the term byte, right? And it becomes confusing sometimes. So let me uh, uh, like share an uh, important point here. Whenever we refer to, in general, in general, whenever we refer to a storage capacity, a storage capacity, so there B always stand for byte, like one TB hard disk, right? 32 gig of RAM. RAM is what? A storage. Hard disk is what? A storage, right? So our SSD, so whenever we uh, use like B, that is byte, uh, like a B uh, for stories, then B stand for byte, means eight bits. And when you, generally we talk about like the internet speed, your broadband home internet speed, like if you say, okay, at my home, I have 500 Mbps internet speed, internet. So now here B stand for bits per second. It's not byte per second right? It's bits per second. So in general, one byte is equal to eight bits, right? So eight bits, eight, eight, eight. It means here we can see like IP address means total there are four octets, but in binary total, there are 32 bits in binary or four byte, right? Four bytes are 32 bits because first octet in binary is equal to eight bits and then eight again, 16, and then eight again, 24, eight again, 32. So IP address, and, and the version that I'm referring here is version four. Because there are two versions, right? I don't want to uh, uh, like confuse you guys because, uh, and that is why I'm not going to first like bring in here like IP version six. We will we'll cover this IP version six also later on, not today, of course. Uh, it's a bit uh, more difficult to understand IP version six, but it's very much part of your course curriculum, CCN. So definitely I will uh, explain IP version six also. But whenever we, uh, like don't mention version. So version four is always referred, right? So you can assume that version that we are talking is what? Version 4.0. So IP version four is 32 bits in binary or four bytes or four octet, one of the same thing, right? So this like, and the first one. So today we, we, we are just, focusing on this one portion, IP address only. Forget about subnet mask, gateway, at least for today, right? They all are very important, they all are very important. But for today's session, just uh, like focus on IP address only, not the subnet mask, gateway and all that. 
so at least you you understand like ip address is like uh, identifier address right to identify device on a network because if there are four computers physically connected but if we have not assigned any address or the ip address to devices so they can never communicate with each other all right so in order to complete this networking after doing physical connectivity you must assign ip addresses right to all four computers and here another important point before i jump to the presentation file let me quickly talk about this physically they all are connected so it looks like a single network a single network or single lan single network or single local area network even i can use this term right yes it looks like a, a single lan or network very much very much like they all are connected to the same switch means they all should communicate with each other right but that's not always true right is about this ip addressing scheme if like because with ip address with this logical address even what we can do we can do logical segmentation i mean like uh, these two computers may be in one network one lan local area network very much like they both will communicate with each other and then these two in different network means all four computers then will not communicate with each other in spite of being physically connected to the same switch they all are connected to the same switch still they may or they may not communicate with each other is all about what ip addressing and that's why in the beginning i i mentioned that ip addressing is very very important topic in your networking and not only networking let's say your plan is to get into cyber security field maybe cloud security right in any domain or firewall understanding ip addressing is the first step right in understanding networking is really very very important topic because with this ip address even we can do logical network segmentation if we want all four should communicate with each other yes that is possible and you don't have to break the physical connectivity let them be connected to the same switch no problem whatsoever let them be connected you want separation you want that these two computers should communicate these two computers should communicate not all four computers yes that is possible and how is that possible with ip addressing ip address right with ip address we can uh, create a two network this is one network maybe network 1 and this one is network 2 so what will happen computers of network 1 will communicate with each other computers of network 2 will communicate with each other but there won't be any communication across these two different networks no they will not communicate right which just help of this ip address and that's what we are going to understand in today lecture really very well just I, i was just giving you like you know like high level overview so Uh, that's why i thought of like just uh, making this point clear because i understand like for anyone like who is very new to this networking field so this topic might be a uh, 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 not very complex but a tricky one yes and software address i hope you understand why it is a software address because address is assigned to the protocol tcp ip and tcp ip is not a hardware right so is there any hardware address also i mean like if ip address is logical address so what about the hardware address because hardware address you understand like pre assigned address we don't have to assign right pre assigned address assigned by default so let me first uh, show you for mistake i close this tab and i wanted uh, this to be open but anyhow okay 
I'm back to my uh, physical machine here, right? I'm switching back and forth between virtual and physical. So uh, you, you will have to uh, pay attention. So this is my uh, physical adapter, Ethernet. And uh, here, like, uh, even uh, not only this, even Wi-Fi adapter also. So if I click here, diagnose, or maybe status, status, status space, right? And if I click here, details, and see here, physical address. Right, our address looking like 7077819955551. Physical address, right? Address of what? Wi Fi adapter, NIC card, network interface card, right? So this address is pre assigned, assigned by the manufacturer, vendor. The vendor here, manufacturer is like I can see here, like the real tech is the name of the company right who built like adapter wi-fi adapter and the address assigned by this vendor vendor can be intel some other vendor right so this address is different than the ip address right and the same like physical address is also this physical address is also known as MAC address, MAC media access control. So MAC address and physical address, one of the same thing. So MAC and physical address means pre-assigned. By whom? By the vendor. By vendor. Uh, as assigned to which? Like the whole computer, laptop, desktop, no the adapter, LAN card, NIC card, right? So laptop or desktop or server machine definitely would have adapter, LAN card for networking. And the pre-assigned address to this hardware is what? Physical address, MAC address. And that is why sometimes we also use a term hardware address, the third term, right? So physical address, MAC address, hardware address, one of the same thing, right? Physical, Mac, or hardware address. So why it is hardware address? Because address is assigned to hardware. Which hardware? As a whole laptop? No. One component of like this laptop, NIC card, right? NIC card, network interface card. And you have just seen like the address is not in, in is in the different format, right? If I click here, and you can uh, do all this testing on your computer also. Once like session is over, whenever you get spare time, just spend uh, time like understanding these things properly. Because really, if you want to, you guys want to make your career in networking. So uh, this is something like you know, like backbone of networking. You will have to understand like these topics, concepts very well. So now, if you uh, look at this address. So it, here it looks 7078, but maybe uh, different also. Let me quickly show you uh, here status. I cannot go there. So let me open my command prompt. And we can also check this with a command. And the command is ipconfig slash all. So we can run this command. And since on my machine, there are a lot of adapters. So uh, different hardware addresses you can see here because uh, on my uh, laptop, there are a lot of adapters. Uh, but, uh, and this is the adapter, physical adapter, Ethernet adapter. Now, let me highlight this. Okay. And media is disconnected because uh, my laptop is also connected with Wi Fi, right? My laptop is connected with Wi Fi, no wired networking. That is why it's showing Ethernet adapter, media disconnected. Even uh, we can also. Verify same from the this page also. Already you have seen this. This one, uh, Ethernet adapter, red cross here, right? Not connected. So same status, but uh, focus here, physical address. This one, this is what address assigned to adapter, 
right? By a real tech, the vendor, manufacturer, maybe in your case, maybe your vendor is Intel or 3Com or some other vendor dealing with a lot of vendors, right? They manufacture Ethernet adapter, LAN card. So this address is not assigned by me, it's pre-assigned, assigned by the vendor to the hardware, to the adapter. And this address is in hexadecimal, right? And do you understand hexadecimal? Hexadecimal means hexadecimal. Total 16 numbers, 16. 16 means 0 to 15. But how do we define 0 to 15 here? So in order to define 0 to 15, uh, we may use like this, 0 to 9, total 10. And then A, B, C, D, E, and F. So total nine numbers here, zero to nine, right? Nine, then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And it's under like in my classroom uh, classes, in fact, uh, uh, a lot of time, like my students get confused. Uh, whenever we say like total, there are 256 numbers or values, right? And, uh, but the last one is 255. So generally, uh, like, Sometimes this, you know, like creates confusion because the value is 255 and I'm saying 256 because in computer, we always start counting from zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine means total 10. And in like uh, schools generally, we uh, nowadays, I'm not sure like how teachers are like teaching nowadays, like whether counting uh, is starting from one, but my, in my school days, I learned counting from 1 to 10, like 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 10, right? Uh, I, I, I didn't learn like counting from 0 to 9. So in a school, a school teachers, they always teach like counting like from 1 to 10. So, you know, like uh, it's somewhere in the mind, in fact. So we always think, okay, 10 means like total 10 numbers. If we, we see 9, then we never assume like this can be 10. So that's where like confusion comes. So anyway, so this is in hexadecimal and hexadecimal means total 16 and 16 means zero to nine and A to F. And that's why you can see here C, A, B, something. And if binary I talk about, then total there are 48 bits in binary, zero and one. So if the same value is converted in zeros and ones, then total there will be 48 bits. But it's a MAC address, physical address. IP address that we are just uh, discussing today is what? In binary, 32 bits. And how IPs are represented? In hexadecimal, no, in decimal. So IP address is represented in decimal. Total 10 numbers and MAC address or this hardware address or physical address represented in hexadecimal. One difference. Another one, MAC address is hardware. Let, let me let me write it down somewhere so that you can easily understand because the topic is really very, very important. So in the beginning, I, I as I mentioned, like I will spend a good amount of time to explain the topic because I want you guys to understand this topic very well. So no matter whether the topic will take two sessions, three sessions, I don't mind, but the concept should be very, very clear to you guys, right? So in computer, if we talk about the host addresses, host means computer, or uh, maybe uh, servers or something. So now here we are talking about two types of addresses, right? We are talking about two types of addresses in host, let me properly write it down because the topic is important, that is why. Okay. So first is physical address. Physical address. Physical address is also known as hardware address. or MAC address, and MAC stands for Media 
access control address and the important point uh, is represented in hexadecimal hexadecimal and hexadecimal means total 16 in numbers and represented as 0 to 9 and a to f right 0 to 9 and a to f and address is assigned by vendor 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 like means manufacturer manufacturer and it's a globally unique address unique address two adapters unique addresses means if you check the physical address on your adapter right so your adapter address would be definitely different address you will never find same address right i mean like if uh, again if I show you this, this is the address of my Wi-Fi adapter, physical address, right? So it's globally unique. You will not find same address of any adapter of any vendor, right? Anywhere, globally unique address. But how uniqueness is maintained, in fact, that's a big question. Because let me tell you another important point. Let us assume that there are two computers here this and this and let us assume because of any reason if they both they both are assigned same software address software address means like address like this right it's a problem why this is a problem because conflict address conflict two house numbers same address right address conflict so no way like they can never communicate and uh, th this this may happen right because ip address is assigned by the administrator by the human being so human being yes like we may commit mistake right if we don't remember that address is already in use so probably uh, we may uh, like assign the same address to another computer because it's a software address but what about the hardware address so okay like it's a software address so definitely we'll take precaution will uh, we will be careful right but what about another address because this machine has two addresses one that we assign ip address software address address assigned to the software and the same computer has another address hardware address both are equally important I'm not saying only IP address is important. Hardware address is also important. They both need to be unique. And even this hardware address need to be globally unique. And hardware address is not assigned by us, pre-assigned, right? What we assign is IP address. Now, let us assume it's a corner use case. It's never going to happen. But let us assume if hardware address of this machine is let's say 4a 01012a 3b05 is a hardware address or mac address right uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 that's correct 12 total 12 digits and this machine computer has also same address suppose right and maybe the heart or the adapter manufactured by uh, three com a vendor and this adapter manufactured by intel another vendor right and now they both have assigned same address and the address is hard coded means like your adapter LAN card this is the adapter right on your motherboard motherboard or maybe separate adapter so there is a chip here and the address is hard coded inside this chip manufacturer like puts this address inside the ic the chip hardware let us assume both land card have been assigned same address and 
you purchase like two laptops maybe uh, one from one vendor another from another vendor or maybe you assembled the computer and now uh, least possibility but let us assume it's just assumption hypothetically i'm just taking this example hypothetically just to make this point more clear to you guys now you have two computers you you, you, you haven't done anything wrong you you like connected both computers to switch but since they both have same address physical address even hard, uh, software address you you are going to assign software address to both the computers you understand ip address very well what you did you assigned 1.1.1 ip address maybe to this computer 1.1.2 ip address to another computer so of course software address is unique but whatever the hardware address not unique no these two computers will communicate no never conflict of hardware address that means hardware address and and even is more important because hardware address we are not going to assign is pre assigned so manufacturer will have to take precaution manufacturer will have to take precaution this should never assign same address right because if intel is one vendor d link is another vendor 3com is another vendor they all are manufacturing lan card right so they will have to take precaution so do they need to ask each other that okay i have assigned this this address to one of the adapter dealing please do not assign this address no they are not going to uh, like interact with each other and that's not feasible not a scalable solution so now there is one organization there is one organization internet based organization right and the name is i triple e institute of electricals and electronics engineers there are a lot of organizations over the internet not only the i triple e later on i will talk about itf internet engineering task force maybe ina internet assigned numbers authority apnic asia pacific network information center afrinet for african region uh, airin for america so there are a lot of organizations i will talk about uh, different organizations later on but for now let's focus on the first one i triple e institute of electricals and electronics engineers so what they do they assign initial initial in binary 24 bits reserved for one vendor then so let's say uh, an intel like intel has obtained uh, maybe initial this value uh, oh, let me use different color 4a 001a from i triple e right d link may be a different one 2 2 33 maybe 3 com is something 49 aa cc right so initial initial 24 bits in binary or maybe uh, 2 2 4 6 8 12 initial 12 digits in hexadecimal assigned reserved by this internet organization right and rest digits are provided by or assigned by these manufacturers and they maintain proper record for those what i have assigned let's say intel has started assign 0000000 then 00001 000002 and so on so intel now understand like okay initial reserved i don't have control over this but rest yes i will be playing with so that's the way hardware addresses are assigned so really we uh, never bothered about the hardware address because we understand is going to be unique and again if i open this pass ethernet even is a virtual machine just but for the understanding for the students like who are preparing for ccna who are just learning networking the simulator has like some assigned some other address is also reserved category and this one is what mac address so how about the format can be different here like uh, on a virtual machine the format that you see here is four octet and then a dot and then four octet and a dot on computer two octet dot then two octet and dot and so on so both both formats are supported right either four octet and then dot four octet dot and four octet dot or maybe two octets grouping of two octets and then they all are separated with the dot dot right 
both are supported. But in IP address, there is only one format. And that's what? Four octet separated with the dot, like this. If I write down any address like this, it's IP address. There's no other format supported. The same, only one format, right? So that's what hardware address is. So both addresses are important, right? Hardware address and as well as software address. So what is software address? IP address is software address. IP address is what? Software address. So the next address is, so we, we don't assign this address, right? Physical address, no, we don't assign. Represented and assigned by vendor, unique address. IEEE plays important role here. Important role in keeping unique or assigning unique address. And the next address is IP address, IP address. So IP address is basically not a physical address, it's logical address. And sometimes known as software address because assigned to software, not pre-assigned, right? It's not pre-assigned. We assign IPs either manually, statically, means static configuration, or dynamically with the help of uh, another protocol service known as GSCP, right? And IP address. And uh, here, let me uh, write down another point here, represented in XR as well, but in binary, total there are, there are 48 bits in binary, right? And uh, six bytes total, because you understand like in one byte, there are eight bits. So one byte means eight bits. So here total 48 bytes. So eight, six into eight. And IP address uh, is represented in, hex, uh, in decimal, decimal. And decimal means zero to nine, total 10 numbers, right? And, uh, and I'm talking about uh, version four, IP version four. There are two versions, right? Version six also is there. And in Bandy, there are like 32 bits or maybe four bytes in Bandy. And Bandy, you understand Bandy means what? Zeros and ones only. Two bits only. That's what band is. And here in IP address, if we are using IPs in a network, then the IP address would be unique. So IPs need to be unique in like a private network. Because there are two types of IPs, right? One that is known as public IPs that is used over the internet. So those IPs need to be unique globally. So IPs now here, like there are two points now. Later on, I will explain uh, in detail, but one IP is private. So private IP means locally unique address, locally. And there is no organization behind it, right? Free to use, locally unique and free to use. So no need to ask anyone, free to use, free to use, no need to ask anyone, right? But it's only for private network, only for private network, not over the internet. Means can't be used over internet. 
and there is another address and that is public public ip right so public ip is means globally unique globally so if you check your ip if i check my ip so definitely they both will be different your ip address because if you are connected with internet i am connected with internet definitely we both would be using different ips right globally unique address because we both are connected via internet and not free to use there are some organizations right and um, used over internet i will talk about this private and public ips later on but yes in ips state way i cannot say like ip need to be unique or not if i am talking if taking the example of a private network internal network so yes in internal network should be unique if i take the example of over the internet so yes and that's why a lot of like uh, you know like um, people uh, or like do hacking and some illegal activities over the internet and they are most likely uh, th there is chance of being caught in fact why because of ip ip plays very very important role let's say you send email to anyone you are sending email like i'm sending email from anywhere from any part of the world to anyone like i send a email to and then there's this any message so along with this message the content even like the sender ip address is also very much part of the message generally uh, like uh, is encoded right there are certain ways to find out that from which ip the mail has arrived the mail has reached hit the inbox right so with the ip even i can very much trace the, the person like who sent email a malicious email phishing attack or any attack in fact involved in malicious activities most likely there are other ways to bypass the things i mean like there are certain tools there are certain software what people do they they uh, you know like um, do ip spoofing means hiding ip address hiding identity right intensely some people do that right if they they, they are like uh, uh, techy guys they understand like i will be caught so what they do they they use certain tool they use certain software to do the masking to hide the ips right so even like they they can mislead uh, like uh, uh, the devices networking devices right about the country about the city even because there are certain tool there are certain software so what they do like let's say i'm sitting here in location a i will connect to any proxy or any other server in location b and then i will send the packet to the destination right and when the proxy server is in different country so this proxy server will be using the sender address so this way yes very much i have like uh, uh, like uh, uh, spoofed my ip right there are certain ways but let's not talk about those stuff right now just is just, just the beginning of ccns so i don't want to uh, like you know like uh, discuss everything <laughs> but you you understand just forget about that ip spoofing and uh, other technique uh, right because there is a one browser even like tor browser if you use this browser so very much you are going to hide your ip right it's just similar to your firefox chrome or uh, edge so it's a uh, uh, onion browser and it's free like there are a lot of free tools available over the internet but anyway if that practice not adopted then very much we can identify the sender we can identify from where the mail has come or like attack has um, initiated how because of this uniqueness because the public ip whenever we send or uh, we connect over the internet so for identification a unique address is assigned to the computer to the laptop and who assign that your local service provider right local internet provider cable internet provider would provide ip address so that might not be uh, like reserved that might not be always with you M maybe like you have a laptop you 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 connected with the internet right ip is assigned to you by whom by local internet service provider maybe the ip is something like this now you power of your modem or router wifi router then again you power down maybe different ip is assigned 
which actually what happens local service provider assign ip address automatically the same way like dsp right and let us assume even a static ip address is assigned so uh, tracking can be done let's say if i uh, do any communication with any server so uh, my ip address will be very much part of the message and what ip public ip address ip provided by local service provider so let's say if someone wants to track me my location so at least the 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 police or cyber police or like the investigation team can very much identify the ip address can contact the local service provider the internet provider mm -hmm. and generally internet provider maintain logging detail right what ip address assigned to which client or customer and how long date everything so they will share the information with the team the investigation agency that yes is my ip address and one of the my client one of my user putting up in this location the address house number like use that ip so so ip you understand like how important it is but over the internet public ips are used and that is why public ips means globally unique address and private ip is only for your private network so how would we need to first understand private ip but I, I hope you understand these two addresses any question so far guys if you you have any doubt any question because still i'm not digging uh, deep inside it in fact uh, I have not even uh, just covered, uh, not even uh, uh, hardly, I have covered only one slide, the first slide only, even I have not <laughs> jumped to the next slide, in fact. Uh, this one bit by it, and then you see here broadcast address, uh, the format IP addressing, and then network address, host address, and then different classes here, you can see here. We need to cover everything, class A, B, C, D, right? But uh, any questions so far? Any doubt? I, I, I have a question. Sure. Well, private IPs and public IPs, can you clarify a little more who has, like for example, my IPs should be considered as a private I, IP? And I'm assuming, and who should I kind of point out as okay. a public IP? Okay. Well, uh, yes, so sure. I'm going to uh, clarify that. So, so let me open a slide here. Okay. <clears throat> so let's understand private and public IP in more detail. As you asked, like public and private IP in detail. All right. So if I take the example here, like let's say you have a a uh, broadband router or the home router here is your Wi-Fi router. Maybe this is your home router. Router is a Wi-Fi router. Or, or cable modem. Or cable modem. Anything like generally it is uh, provided by the ISP, your local service provider. Okay, so, and uh, here is your uh, local service provider, internet service provider, very much like the mediator. So this one is local internet service provider or cable modem provider, maybe in your region. Or, or any other like internet authority, right? Who, who deals in internet and all that. So it's a internet provider, cable provider, and this is the cable that runs here and reaches your home or office. So cable can be a fiber cable, some other cable, and it's all taken care by the service provider. We don't do anything there, right? And uh, uh, this service provider facilitates like internet connectivity. So eventually like uh, uh, we are connecting with the internet. Of course, let me talk the diagram here. So internet here, this is internet. Okay, so let me 
down properly. Okay. So this is internet, internet. And as uh, like internet, we know like network of networks for so different countries, different networks are connected all together. So up to this point is very much like uh, a service provider uh, take care of. And now let's say, um, sorry, something, okay. So let me uh, take uh, one computer here. So it's my maybe a uh, laptop, another home desktop here, maybe a mobile phone or something here, tablet, they all are connected, maybe in wireless mode, Wi-Fi, or maybe wired even like, generally uh, at home we use the Wi-Fi for connection. So maybe it's a uh, computer here, like uh, another PC. So this is my one of the laptop. Maybe this is my home PC or desktop, in fact. My tab or some mobile phone. Mobile phone, no worries. They all are connected. And uh, maybe even the smart TV here. I have my home smart TV. It's too big. Check this one. So maybe IP camera even. So whole bunch of devices at my home. So this is my smart TV, right? So, and maybe some other devices at your home place. Now, uh, they are like connected with Wi-Fi, wireless, I mean. So they, there is no wire coming in. So maybe here like it's wireless. This one is also wireless. And a smart TV also wireless. And also uh, here, like you, we, you will find like the LAN port uh, like written here. So maybe uh, you have connected one of like your computer with the wire. So this one is wired networking and rest wireless, right? Now, this device comes with and IP address of this your LAN side. This portion is your LAN side, right? So this portion, I mean like uh, this portion is what your LAN side network, LAN network, and they all need to be in the same network. They all, right? LAN network. So they all need to be in the same network zone. Your laptop, home PC, tab, IP phone, even like your uh, IP camera, they all, right? Okay, now this uh, like router here, home router generally, uh, let me choose this pin, different one. Okay, okay. So this router, the home router, probably uh, it will be using IP address and this is private IP address, generally 192.168.1.1, the IP address is pre-assigned to this router. Which router? Your home router, right? IP address is pre-assigned. We never assign this IP address, it is pre-assigned from the manufacturer. So let's say your home router is D-Link or uh, some other vendor router, like there are a lot of vendors, right? TP-Link and the, uh, ubiquity and some other vendors any vendor so this ip address is again pre-assigned but the ip address is this ip address is private ip address and private ip address is assigned by whom by the vendor router vendor like uh, i mean like if you have the router from maybe a uh, dealing a home router or tp link or any other vendor so IP address, private IP address is pre-assigned, right? To all routers and the same route IP. And also this home router is configured by default from the manufacturer itself. This is also pre-configured to provide IP, IP addresses to your network devices, these, these devices, right? To provide IP address, any address from this range, 
automatically. It's all done by default, right? It means my laptop will uh, maybe uh, get IP address like 192.168, maybe 1.2. Maybe this my home PC, 1.3. Even generally, we never assign IPs manually, right? Because this device, like the router device, does that. Router device does that, this home router. It is pre-configured. It's very much like a DSCP. It is working as a DSCP. We'll assign any IP address from this range, right? Automatically to my laptop, to my home PC, maybe tab, the third one. So again, maybe uh, 192, 168, 1.4. The smart TV. 192.168.1.5. Now, whenever they communicate with each other, like let's say from this home PC, I want to access a file of my laptop, right? Or maybe uh, from tab, I want to, uh, or let's say I want to do my screen mirroring. I want to mirror my uh, mobile iPhone or a screen with the smart TV. Yes, very much I'm using IP address, but private IP address within the same network, the, because this is one zone, basically, a LAN zone, this one. Whole bunch of devices here. Now, let's say laptop wants to access YouTube. This one, let's say LinkedIn or Facebook. I mean, like they want to reach out to internet. Let's say you want to play YouTube on your smart TV. It means now they all are reaching out to internet. First question. All this IP address, 192.168.1.2.1.3.1.4.1.5 will be used? No. Answer is no. Why? Because IPs are what? Private IP address provided by this home router. IPs are, and even, let's say, uh, this IP, I took like 1.2, 1.3, and so on. Even let's say uh, uh, it's another uh, person network, again, an internet connection, maybe the home router, and then again, whole bunch of devices here. They all will be using the same IP address, most probably, because if D-Link is the vendor, so D-Link vendor uh, means like the same IP. Means IP that uh, is assigned to your router will be mine also, I mean, private IPs. So what happens when they go to internet, they route the traffic to internet, my laptop, home PC, tab, smart TV. So IP address that is automatically assigned by home router from this range, 192.168.1.1 is never used. No, IP address that is private here, 192.168.1.2, or let me uh, type uh, properly here. So these IPs are used internally. Internally means within this network only. Now let me clear this screen to make this point more clear. All right, so this is the wired network. That's correct. I don't want to delete this. So this uh, home network, home network, as I mentioned, this home router has, router has, router, Router IP address, router internal IP address, LAN side IP, internal means LAN side IP pre assigned, 192.168.1.1. Or maybe uh, you may find uh, uh, another IP also, because I've seen like uh, in uh, some other vendor devices, IP address 192.168.0.1. So maybe like 0 0.1 or 1.1, most probably e either one, like you'll find here. And the address range pre-assigned here, a range of IP, range of IP or pool, IP pool, right? What you find, uh, maybe uh, like uh, this range to, from this to, from this to 192, 168, one dot, maybe 254. Means your router has some configuration, right? And router has configuration like that the first IP is the router IP address. And then this home router, home uh, broadband router will automatically assign IP address from this range, right? Two, three, four, five, so and so on, right? To all the connected devices, either connected via Wi-Fi or maybe your, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, wired network. So if I assume that my laptop IP address here is 
one i do one six eight one dot two and even i don't have much knowledge about ip address so what will happen so i will go with the default and default is what home router will automatically provide ips and then here ip is three now my uh, mobile phone ip maybe 192 168 1.4 my smart tv ip 192 1.5 so these ips are what private ips right they all are important they all need to be unique but these ips are used when when devices communicate locally with each other like uh, as i said i want to do a screen mirroring i want to mirror my mobile screen with this smart tv laptop they all are connected that is possible but when the world they all will reach out to the internet so these ips will never be used right why because they all are what private ips they have locally significant they are used within the network within the same environment only they can never be used over the internet you cannot run internet with these ips no you cannot run you cannot run internet with these ips why because they all are in lan network so in lan network ips are useful in this lan network yes ips are useful private ips lan ips private ips so what happens when they go to internet so basically your service provider internet service provider will provide automatically another ip address let's take any example i'm just taking any uh, uh, any example let's say uh, i'm taking just uh, random ip how about this ip is not uh, real ip is something uh, known as locally uh, significant so just uh, i don't want to take any an ip so okay let me take proper ip address okay let's say 114.30.r103.2215.2 suppose now this ip is what this ip is public ip address right so an ip is this ip address is globally unique and provided by whom by local internet service provider a cable modem provider this may be changed next time when you power on your router as long your device is connected with the internet you will have this ip address next time maybe this ip may get changed no problem but this ip address is what public ip address right so what happens now this laptop machine ip address 192.168.1.2 wants to go to internet this ip address will not be used then which ip then this one what about this home pc is another computer right wants to access google.com packet will go via this router now which ip address will be used same ip what about third machine same ip what about the fourth machine smart tv same same ip how it happens the device the router what it does it translates private ips to public ips technically it is known as network address translation right and the concept is many to one translation one translation many to one because here on this my lan segment i can have 200 devices right so whenever they will communicate with each other they will use private ips and all the 200 computers they all want to have internet access so private ips cannot be used there has to be public ip so do we need to take 200 ips no i have 200 devices on my lan so these 200 ips can get mapped with single ip right it means over the internet there is no identity of laptop home pc tab smart tv this device knows everything but internet users know they will see like the packets coming from this ip right this one <clears throat> the ip address here so that's the way like uh, how it happens so the ip that is uh, like external external interface because generally the router the home router would have two ips 
one external ip is and one internal ip is internal ip is private external ip is public so that's the way how networking is done so even if you open the browser and if you just run the i come like let's just simply if you say like what is my ip address so you see like what is your ip address what is my ip address or public ip or private ip just google it and it will show the ip address but that ip address and see here like just i'm giving you the real example so if you see here let's show the ip address of my wi-fi adapter right my wi-fi adapter ip address is what let me show you this way properties so it's my wi-fi adapter and ip address is this one this is what my private ip address so if i go to uh, any internet site so this ip address no will not be used this is private ip address right this is useful this is important but when i'll be communicating with devices in my home network in the lan network whenever i will route packet to internet so this ip address will not be used then which ip address my router ip address right my router ip address what is that if you want to see so either log in to your router page or just type what is my ip and see here this is my ip address this public ip address right this public ip address what i typed what is my ip address so this way you can type you and will show you your ip address and the ip address this ip address is provided by my internet provider internet service provider next time this ip will get changed it's not always will retain with me right if i just disconnect internet i mean like uh, i power off my router internet router power it on this ip may get changed because the ip address is provided by dynamically by the service provider but in companies in large enterprise network even the public ip address is also static in nature never get changed but in home network yes like may get changed makes sense like understood the concept the whole like um, concept of like this private public any other question guys any any question based on this ip address or mac address or still if any confusion then yes go ahead you can ask me because uh, i will not teach you uh, uh, a new new concept today because i understand the topic is important so this will be too much to digest for a single class because i have been in this field for more than 21 years from now so uh, but uh, if you are new to this networking field so understand like uh, uh, understanding the whole concept in a single day yes would be very very difficult and you need to uh, you know like uh, spend uh, some time like uh, reading about ip addresses or doing some research maybe in your home network right ip and all that any question from anyone like yahe mohammed or rashid i will say like abdi rashid but i'm just maybe my pronunciation might be something different so but any question guys any you good that that was a good answer and i it, it really uh, uh clarify a lot of between public and uh, private okay okay great any anyone like any question any uh, anyone would like to ask then yes you can ask question and uh, uh, because uh, further like i will uh, explain tomorrow session i will keeping today session short uh, intensely i am doing so because the topic is important and uh, because the next like um, uh, what uh, we will do in the next class the same like module ip addressing but next class we'll understand like first like terminology but like bit byte octet i believe you understand now uh, but uh, important concept uh, is this one ip addressing so tomorrow we'll understand like the addressing concept the format and I, as i mentioned like there is some range of value pre decided we cannot go beyond that so we are very much restricted to use the number from the range only there are different classes tomorrow we'll understand different classes of ips and once we understand properly then what we'll do we'll complete this topology right we'll make sure that host devices all four devices communicate with each other right because uh, and how we can do verification in this virtualized environment so we have certain command some tool 
So we can send some data packet from here to this computer and if we get response back, that shows, yes, they were very much communicating with each other, right? And there, there are a lot of like uh, uh, ways like to do the verification very much like we can go this way, maybe tomorrow probably. So if I assign this IP, let, let's say valid IP, or maybe uh, this one, 192.168.1.2. But as, as I mentioned, there is certain rule. We need to follow the rule. Without following rule, no way. Like we cannot uh, use IP address properly. Only if we follow the rule. And if I assign this IP 192.168.1.2, I assign this IP to this computer, right? This one. And uh, can be uh, assigned to this machine. The last one, let's say here, if I assign. Uh, maybe 192.168.1.5. So it's a proper address, right? So what I did, I just assigned, just to show you, assign address like this, 1.5 here, 1.2 to this computer. So because I have, I have just, so you know, like followed uh, the IP addressing rule, in fact, what what uh, architect should have same values, what architect should have different value. So I followed that. And now very much like they both are on the same network, they will communicate each other. And how I can do verification in this virtualized environment, in the simulation environment, there are multiple ways. And the easiest method is just, again, double click here. We can go to desktop. We can open the command prompt, command prompt of this computer, computer number two here. And then here, like we have the command ping. So we can use this ping command, right? So with this ping command, we can send some packets to 1.5 machine, the last one, this one, uh, PC5, right? So from here, so what I'm, when, what I'm doing, I'm sending some packets and see here, I'm getting response back. So if I send some packet, I get response back. That means they both are, on the same network because from here what i did i sent packet and then packet returned back to me means they very much they are communicating with each other so it's simulator but yes we can do a lot with this simulator even and even if uh, you see here then it shows like uh, show master work or not master not working so uh, and even like there are certain mode here like simulation mode and uh, I will explain about this tool later on. So it's very good tool, in fact. So you'll have to keep on doing practice on this simulator. So I will share the link like from where you can download and install this software. But the tool is very good, in fact. So it's not in real time. So simulation is something like uh, uh, sending some, you know, like uh, packet here and uh, still I'm in simulation mode and see here. So it will show. This is the packet, this will just go this way and then what this one. So if, if I put it in real time mode, so it will show like go on this way. So uh, the tool is very good and uh, I'll explain like uh, about some of the functionalities of this tool, packet tracer, but very good tool for doing your lab, CCNA lab at least. You can do your complete CCNA lab in this virtualized environment. But my objective is first like to uh, explain IP addressing Right, and then like uh, after proper IP address assignment, verification, like whether they all are communicating or not. And then intensely we will create two network then. Maybe uh, a network of two computers separate than these two computers, right? Just with the help of IP addresses only, IP addressing. Uh, so, so if no question, then I will wrap up today's session here and tomorrow, We'll start with a state away IP addressing, right? Today was just, you know, like a, a high level overview of IP address, hardware address and all that. And even um, I didn't talk much about hardware address. So probably once like you understand IP address, then again, I will bring like Mac address or physical address into the discussion. And then I will explain like how they both are integrated with each other where there is a tightly integration between IP address and MAC address. I will talk about that also later on.
गुड गाइस सो फार और एनी क्वेश्चन मैं so i will share all four uh, ppts uh, like the three previous and the fourth one that i started today just for your reference so definitely i will do that i will share all ppts so and uh, these four ppts for initial classes would be okay and uh, even like if you want to read more about ip so you can find a lot of resources but that might be uh, very confusing so uh, uh, so let, let me first finish like ip addressing from here and then i would uh, probably recommend you to you know like check some other references uh, otherwise what will happen uh, you will be confused very much because if you read different articles over the internet uh, google or youtube probably like uh, not a good idea so let me finish like explaining this ip address in the class itself once i am done i have completed this topic from my end then then after yes so surely you can check some other references also for your better understanding but first uh, definitely i would like to uh, complete from my end only and uh, because it's a bit confusing topic uh, very important a bit confusing but once you understand the concept so probably this would be forever and a uh, very uh, important topic not for ccna even if you are planning for some higher end trainings like ccnp or maybe some if you really you want to get into a cyber security domain like the very good field nowadays or security field uh, you want to understand firewalls next generation firewalls uh, this is like one of the topic which plays important role everywhere even in cloud also and uh, yahe uh, will agree with me at I, i believe uh, he has just finished uh, cloud practitioner aws so there also we uh, talk uh, very much about ip uh, network address uh, some routing concepts so it's everywhere i i mean like with a cloud or networking ips are everywhere <laughs> so really very very important so sure i will share ppts so all right guys so i'm just ending up session here i'm wrapping up session and tomorrow will connect same time 9 am cst and 8:30 ist tomorrow right so shall i end the session or anything do we do we don't need a confirmation uh uh to get that class tomorrow uh plan, tomorrow right? class is tomorrow class is confirmed yes and there is no confusion now yes i got the uh probably there was yes. some you know like misunderstanding so now is cleared so uh, probably uh, the course coordinator did 